Third and five from the 13-yard line on that left hash mark. Summers back to throw, looking, lofting right side, incomplete. The receiver fell down, and now there's a flag being thrown in the backfield. That receiver fell down. Maybe that's a holding call. It is. That's going to be a hold against Holy Family. I think the brush coaches thought that that flag was being thrown as pass interference, even though it was well short of the target on the right side and well defended by the beat diggers. And if you're brushed, do you just decline the penalty, make it fourth and five? You know, I'm not sure what you do. That's a hard call because, you know, the kicker, Gary, has plenty of leg to make that play. And, and uh, you know, Brush is concerned about giving him too much ground, but at the same time, you don't want to give him a chance with those speedy running backs. Well, Gary, the speeding running back as well, to, to pick up that first down on a long run. Well, it does amount to a 12-yard penalty, so the bait diggers will take the penalty. That means it'll be third down and 17 to go. The mark to make is the 18-yard line. Another critical play for Brush. With 7.57 to go in the third, Holy Family leads 9-6. to six. They've got two receivers out to the right, two in the backfield. The B diggers will send five, rolling right as Summers, plenty of protection, looking to throw. He's getting pressured. He's down. He is down, and the B diggers sack Summers back and around the 33-yard line. And... Levi Brenneman was the first bead digger to get a piece of Joe Summers and throws him for an eight-yard loss. What a stand by the bead digger defense. Oh, my goodness. I, well, I was really proud of that. As the, it looked like Summers was, was going to have plenty of time to, to um, make the throw, but all of a sudden, once those guys broke free, they just ran right back there and made the tackle. Now you really got to watch out for a fake because it's fourth down and about 25 yards. This will be a... 49-yard field goal attempt by Jonathan Gary. There's the snap. It's down. That kick is up. It's got plenty of leg, and it is good. Holy Mahungas, 49 yards away by Jonathan Gary. Holy Family, 12, brush 6 with 7.05 to go in the third on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Okay, we'll keep it right here. As the Bead Diggers trail the game by a score of 12 to 6. And, you know, they didn't move the football much there. You know, this is where field position is, is just critical. And you take a look at, like, our kicking game. We kick the ball off. We end up giving Holy Family the ball if without a penalty right around the 35 or 40-yard line. And now when they kick it off, you know, they have a kicker that's got a big enough leg to where, you know, if Brush doesn't get a good run back or hope that the ball goes out of bounds so that they get the penalty and the ball on the 35, you know, they could be stuck deep in their own territory or at least on the 20. That for Holy Family was only a 21-yard drive. Can you imagine that with a penalty and everything going backwards? They ran nine plays and only went 21 yards because of the penalties, but Jonathan Gary makes a 40 Nine-yard field goal. It's 12 to six with 7:05 to go in the third, and with the beat diggers down by six, Gary will boot that football. A line drive that's headed towards the sideline, and it's picked up at the five-yard line by Brandon Rutherford, and he spins out of a tackle when he's across the 10 to around the 15. And the beat diggers are not in good field position with seven minutes to go in the third. You know that was one of those kicks too. It looked like it was just meant to be because it was headed towards that sideline. And I think Brandon must have reconsidered and thought, man, if I don't catch this thing, it's just going to die on the one. And you know, I'm afraid on that play, maybe Brandon made the wrong decision and should have let it go because there's a good chance it would have gone into the end zone. If not, you know, even if he had to pick it up at the last minute, he probably wouldn't have gotten more yards than what he had right there. First and 10 at the 16-yard line for the Bee Diggers. So they've got 84 yards to operate with. They did score on an 81-yard drive earlier in the game. Garcia to hand it off to Weiser running right side. He is gang tackled. No gain and a late flag. Let's hope that's not against Brush because if it is, they're going even further backwards. They'll be inside their own 10-yard line. This is a big call that will be made in this game. It'll be face mask against Holy Family. That'll be a five-yard variety. 
Nice break for the bead diggers. Hey, we'll take it. We'll take that five yards any way we can get it. And and uh, I have to mention, Holy Family's back out in that five-two defense with those three big defensive linemen and two pretty good-sized defensive ends up there trying to stop this running game. Like a good neighbor, State Farm agent Greg Mullen is there. Let Greg Mullen work with you to get the discounts you desire and the coverage you need. State Farm agent Greg Mullen. So officially, it's going to be a one-yard gain and a five-yard penalty. Should be a second and four. Well, they're marking it at the 22, so it will be or a first and five, I should say. That's what it'll be, first and five. With a football at the 22-yard line. Clock running, 6.47 to go in the third. B-Diggers down 12 to 6. Garcia will pitch it right. Tanner Morrow's got a hold of the outside, and he's hit quickly, although he does gain about a couple of yards, maybe three to the 25. The initial hit by Austin Mall. Also into the play, Tim Sullivan, the 5'10", 200-pound senior linebacker. But a nice decision by Eric Garcia to pitch that one out and give Tanner Morrow some time to run. He picks up three, second down and two. You know, the thing was, is again, it was a great pitch there by Garcia and Rush running that option to the short side of the field. It does keep the Holy Family coaches and players from seeing what's going on, but the negative is it doesn't give Morrow a whole lot of room to use the speed to get to the corner and turn it upfield. That time he kind of stutter-stepped and cut back, and the Holy Family kids made a sure tackle. Second down and two for the B-Diggers at their own 24-yard line. Two receivers put out each side. Connor Wise with the lone setback has the football handoff up the middle. He corrals that football across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Looks like a beat digger first down. It looked like he ran over Tim Sullivan that time as Connor Weiser picked up two yards, and that's all he needed for the chains to move down the field. He looked like that ball came loose, too. It looked like it bounced right up into a Holy Family kid's arms, and the Holy Family kid... Recovered it, but the official said that he was already down when the when the fumble occurred. So Weiser, they know that that he they can get the football from him. So he's really going to have to wrap up and hold on to that thing as the Holy Family kids try to strip the football from him. B diggers call a timeout. We'll take it with them. Five thirty-seven to go in the third quarter. Holy Family twelve, brush six on ten ten KSIR and KSIR.com. 